is good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Day of Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have our brand new WWE Elite Series 81 Street Profit Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins figures, and I am super excited to review these for you guys. Again, if it sounds like I'm talking out of the side of my mouth or if it sounds like my mouth is hurting when I talk, it's because it completely is. But seriously, though, guys, I am super excited for these figures. I feel like these guys and the Viking Raiders, we've, we've been waiting forever on, right? It seems like we have been waiting for months and months and months and even years it seems like for the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders but we finally have both tag teams in our collections and it is excellent. I can't wait to see people fed with these. It's going to be excellent but let's shut the hell up and dive into it guys. Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins in the house. Front viewing windows right here on the sides of the packaging you get beautiful oh that's pretty nice right there. It looks like they're back to back right there. Pretty genius right there. I like that. I like that. If you do it this way it's not as cool. I like the back to back so Montez Ford in the back. Angelo Dawkins in the front. I like the way that looks right there. On the back, you get an excellent shot of Montez Ford here and Angelo Dawkins. Oh, God. On the back, you get a picture of Montez Ford and you get Angelo Dawkins. If you'd like to read their bios, you can do so now. I think they say the exact same thing. You have the rest of the figures in the wave. On the other side, you get great images of both men there. And that pretty much does it for our packaging. And if you guys noticed, they did add the certified authentic logos to the front of Elite 81. I can't remember if Elite 80 had this. They could have had it, but I know for a fact the top talents figures and then these starting off do have them. And I remember yesterday when I was reviewing Viewing Elite 48 Dolph Ziggler. And now here we are at Elite Series 81. So that's that's freaking insane, dude. But before we dive into the review, if you guys would like to pick these up, you can do so at Ringside Collectibles. WrestlingFigures.com. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. Huge shout out to them for making the video possible. But let's go ahead and dive Ford and Dawkins out of their packaging because we want all the smoke. So here are the Street Profits out of the package, you guys. Looking pretty swell, I might add. I like some things that are going on with these figures. They are not perfect, though, which we're going to get into, and we're going to describe all of these things. So usually how we do it, guys, is if we're dealing with singles wrestlers, and, you know, the, the wrestlers that we're reviewing usually don't have anything to do with one another, we'll do one figure and then the other figure's accessories and then run it back and look at the other figure and the other figure's accessories. But since we're dealing with a tag team here today, I figure we might as well just do both in one. So what we're going to do is take a closer look at the Profits accessories and what they come with and what what each individual figure comes with, and then we'll run it back and take a closer look at themselves one by one, and then we'll do their comparisons. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and dive into both Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins' accessories, and then we'll dive into the figures themselves. All right, guys, so getting into their accessories, I guess we can start off with Angelo Dawkins' headband over here. Now, this does come off the figure, if you guys noticed. It says Street Profits. It's kind of two-in-one here. They're kind of connected. It says Street Profits, and on the bottom, it does say Never Lose, or Never Lost, or Never Lose, but but it says never lost, so I don't know. I, I know that's accurate, but it says never lost instead of never lost. But I do like the headbands. I think both of them look good. I think it would have been cool to see two separate ones, but it probably wouldn't have fit on the figure very nicely, so I understand it. But it fits the figure's head well. You guys already saw what it looked like on the figure, so that's very nice. Also with Angelo Dawkins, you also get this beautiful cloth, nice, like super nice Street Profits jacket that is Velcroed in the front, so you guys can see here. It's kind of like a Letterman's jacket. It's got the nice red color. It has a Street Profit logo on the back. Kind of reminds me of a classic White Sox logo. A little similar to like, like it's got some similarities to the Boston Red Sox B a little bit. I know, I think Angelo's from Cincinnati and Montez Ford is from Chicago. So maybe we got some things from around there. It kind of does look like a White Sox logo or a classic White Sox logo. But I like the way this jacket looks. We are going to go ahead and put this on Angelo Dawkins so we can see exactly what this looks like on the figure. Now this torso they use for Angelo Dawkins is massive, but I think the jacket is big enough to get on this guy. So yeah, there is the figure. So here's the jacket on the figure and you can Velcro this up. So there's Angelo Dawkins in the jacket. I'm also going to look and see what Montez Ford looks like because I think that's pretty important. Maybe you guys want to pick up two of these jackets or two Angelo Dawkins to see what both jackets look like on both guys because that's what my plan is, you know. So let's go ahead and take a look at this and just find out together. Just sliding the jacket off of Dawkins, trying to put it on Ford. Now I have, an, I have a feeling it's going to swallow Ford, but you know, you know. These are definitely, this is definitely not going to be as snug as the Usos jacket, but okay, it definitely swallows him. Maybe you could play with it. Maybe if you like, I, I don't know, man. You might could like close pin it in the back or something and make it look better, but it's definitely way too big, which is unfortunate. Here's kind of what it looks like standing up. I mean, the sleeves are too long. Sleeves are too long, and uh, you can't really roll them up that well, so I don't know. Maybe you could hack the sleeves off and maybe cut off the bottom part and maybe make it fit a little bit better, but this is probably something I probably am not going to do now, just looking at it like that. I mean, it's definitely way too... It looks like he's wearing hockey pads and a hockey jersey over this figure, but... 
nonetheless, that's what that's what the jacket looks like on both guys. Now, on top of the jacket accessory, we also get the hooded, you know, jacket accessory that comes with Montez Ford, and this one is going to fit him a lot better. It is sleeveless, and it's basically a rubber version of that jacket that we just saw. It's got a nice zipper sculpt on it. It's got the Street Profits logo there. You got the hood pockets in the front. Street Profits logo on the back. It does clip on in the back, so it's similar to like a Seth Rollins vest, and something you might be able to do is remove these Street Profits logos, or even if you added like a little line right here, you could add a little line right there, and then a little line on the back, and you could make this a Seth Rollins hoodie and throw it onto a Seth Rollins figure. I'm just thinking outside the box, but that's just something that just popped in my head if you wanted to make like a custom attire for Seth Rollins and then throw this on there. But here's what the jacket looks like on Montez Ford, so that looks pretty good. I think it fits well. I haven't clipped it in the back just simply because I didn't want to just for this little segment, but it will clip on nicely. But once you do line up these holes and you plug them in, it really hugs the figure well. But there's Montez Ford's jacket. Now also on Montez Ford, you do get this red solo cup that's very nice. Now if you guys can read that text, it does say King Tez. And if you wanted to make it more accurate, you could paint like a white ring around the top to make it a red solo cup with King Tez on it. But it's got, it actually has nice sculpted lines into it, so that's pretty cool to see that. And they did give him choke slamming hands on the figure so that he can hold this cup. So if you're wondering why he didn't get Mike holding hands, Mike holding hands would have been nice to see to go along with the choke slamming hands, but they did give him those so that you could plug in the red solo cup. He also comes with sunglasses, and they are the HBK style. So, you know, you just plop these onto the figure right there, and these are accurate to the glasses that he wears, and they fit the figure well. Now, one thing I will say is they don't go all the way back on the ears, but they do still fit the figure. They're like, his head's so wide, and the glasses are so, like, narrow that they do fit the figure nicely. So that is something you love to see. He also comes with his crown. You can't have King Tez without his crown. Now, this is a way better king than Trash Corbin, Brad, I'll tell you that. So the crown does fit the Tez 4 figure very, very nice. I like the way it fits on the head. And then the last accessories that we have for both guys are their interchangeable hands. And on Angelo Dawkins, he does come with fists. And then he also comes with mic holding hands, which you love to see. And he also comes with ricochet hands. So he comes with the massive ricochet hands, which I do like to see with Angelo Dawkins. Angelo Dawkins is a really big dude, so seeing these come with him doesn't really bother me. The mic holding hands are always nice. And then you have the solid gold gloved hands. You can't see me or tin or whatever the hell you want to call these hands. You do have the gloved hands right here, which is very cool. You got the black palms and then the gold on the stuff. And they do have texturing to them. So that is pretty cool right there. I like to see that. No logos or anything like that, but they are solid gold, so you can plug them onto your Montez Ford. But I think that pretty much does it for all of the Street Profits accessories, guys. So with that being said, let's dive into Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford themselves. So diving into Dawkins and Ford, guys, we're going to start off with Dawkins right here. And the head sculpt is very nice. I think this head sculpt looks just like Dawkins. I have no issues whatsoever with it. The only issue I have is underneath the headband, and we're going to get into that right now. As you guys see, when I lift it up, he has like this black dip coming down the middle of the forehead. It's not as noticeable on camera, but it actually is pretty significant. I'm going to have to acetone that off. I like the hairline. I like the hair sculpt. He's got some nice texturing in there for his hair. I like the facial hair. The head, we are going to do an articulation standpoint, but you guys can see here, his head kind of like, I don't know, it kind of seems like a bobblehead a little bit. Or not like a bobblehead, but it just kind of like jars a little bit. Like it'll like take over. You can still articulate it and stuff like that, but it kind of like, you see how it like kind of yanks back in position sometimes. So shouldn't bother anybody. It's just something to note. So putting this back onto the figure right here, because Angelo Dawkins can't be Angelo Football Dawkins without his Angelo Football headband. Going down to the torso. Now, I honestly, I don't know. I think it looks good on camera for sure, but I feel like in packaging and stuff like that, like this angle right here, it looks a lot better, but I don't know how I feel about them using a Braun Strowman torso. I'm pretty sure this is a Braun Strowman torso, but you do have the nice Street Profits logo, the white and red singlet. Looks really good. I like the arms right here. The only thing I hate about Braun Strowman arms is they're really hard to get down by the sides and the shoulders kind of, you know, they'll get stiffy liffy on you and you don't want to be stiffy liffy and you don't want to be loosey goosey. So that's just something to note. Another thing I'll note is that since they gave him the Braun Strowman arms and they gave him the Braun Strowman torso, his hands look super tiny. I don't know if you guys are getting that. It doesn't look as bad as Braun Strowman because Braun Strowman's a little bit bigger, I think, but it is definitely something to note. He does have his rubber bands over here. You have a painted on rubber band over here and then two more painted on this side. Looks really good. On the back, there is nothing. You also have the Uso style crotch. I don't know if this is a new crotch. I'm sure it's not, but it does have like the shorts vibe to it. You guys know that he does wear the long shorts in the ring. You got the nice sculpt going on right there for the gym shorts. On the legs, he does have the nice white stripes going down, white stripes going around the knees, Street Profits logo there. On the other side, you get nothing. He is on ball joints, and he can do the damn splits his splitsies like you've never damn seen. And this is something that's really, really interesting, guys. You guys will actually notice this on both guys. Both of these guys have pinless joints, which is a very interesting choice. I think these are the first elites to have pinless joints, if I'm not mistaken. But now you cannot really... I know we've had that in the past with basics. I think all basics, really, on their legs now have pinless joints. But moving to pinless joints is going to result 
result in us not being able to really leg swap without damaging some stuff. It's not going to be nearly as easy. I'm sure you can still do it, but it's not going to be near the same. And it's probably going to be some different technology when it comes to switching legs. So I'm not sure how we're going to go about that. So I don't know if you'll be able to do that. We'll have to see about that in the future. But we do get a little bit of paint chipping on the kneecaps right here. And I'm guessing that's due to the pinless joints technology because both figures have this kind of damage on their knees. And you guys can see the white paint run from there to there. I might can acetone that off. But you guys will notice these little divots in the knees. Are you guys seeing this damage on the knees? Both figures have that little divot on each side of the kneecap, kind of like the top and bottom. And then he does have his solid red calves for his leg sleeves or his tights. And then he has black ankle socks. And then he has John Cena shoes that are in red with white outsoles that look really good. Remember, I was talking about how you could do some shoe swaps with these guys and John Cena. So we'll have to see about that. I honestly think doing a shoe swap on this will make the figure look better. So we'll have to play around with that and see what we can come up with but there is the full Angelo Dawkins figure and I guess we can go ahead and knock out the articulation while we're right here but you guys know this the head did pop back he is on a Braun Strowman torso so the lean forward and back isn't the greatest it's not a terrible one but you guys know how terrible Braun Strowman is because you guys know the arms can't even touch each other which is terrible I hate that arms do go up of course you do have your bicep swivel they do get in the way of the torso though because it's so John Brown big he can do the best split I think I've ever seen he is on ball joints so you can remove that he does have upper thigh cut double jointed knees but they are kind of stiff, so you want to be very careful when bending that knee, and I'm having a difficult time kind of bending this second joint to get the double jointed knee, and it's like actually kind of really difficult, like I can't even bend it, so I don't really know how to even bend that. It's like the way it was the way it was made, like because if I go any more, it's going to pop the damn calf off, bro. So that is definitely something I've noticed with this figure. You guys see, I can't even, I can't bend the knee, so when I bend it at 90, if I try to go any more than 90, the calf piece is going to pop off of this little little uh, of this peg right here and even when I do this it's super hard so I, I don't know how you're supposed to articulate this knee but he does get 90 degree and I, I think he can go more it's just really difficult like good god I can't get it without popping off the calf so that's definitely something you want to see he does have calf rotation and he does have the regular John Cena you know lower leg ankle rocker and he also has the ability to push down his foot all the way down so some pretty solid lower half articulation except for that knee joint and then he does have Braun Strowman top torso syndrome. Whatever the hell that means. But let's take a closer look at Montez Ford. So getting into Montez Ford, guys, you will see the head sculpt right here. Now, when they first showed off this figure in the render image, we were like, damn, bro, he looks super high. He wants all the smoke, literally. And I think they ended up going with that. I thought when we saw the images, like the, you know, the mock prototype images where, you know, you have the white background and stuff, I thought they fixed the head sculpt. His eyes do look to seem a little bit open, but he definitely looks a little bit high. He definitely definitely looks a little bit high. Um, one thing I will say is I think the hairline's a little bit too short. Like, maybe he needs to have a fade up under here and then maybe extend this a little bit forward. I feel like his forehead may be a little bit too big like they, they set back his hairline a little bit too much so maybe we can surgery that or something we'll have to see. But this looks just like Jalen Hurts. Just the first thing I think of when I look at this guy is Jalen Hurts. I think of Jalen Hurts immediately. I don't know if we have any college football, Alabama, Oklahoma, or Philadelphia Eagle fans out there. But I'm from Tuscaloosa, Alabama if that says anything right there. But I'm just getting Jalen Hurts vibes all day. They kind of just favor each other anyways. But we do have a nice ricochet torso which is really cool. His torso really doesn't ab flex that much, which I really wish Mattel figures would get better at. He does have all of his tattoo sleeves here. You got the nice tattoos on both sides. I think all the tattoos look good on this guy. I think they did a really fantastic job on those. I like the arm choice. He does have choke slamming hands. I really wish we could have gotten mic holding hands to come with him, but of course that doesn't happen. Down here, he does not have like an Uso crotch mold. He has like a regular tights mold, I guess, because his pants are so tight, but I think they could have gave us like the Uso crotch piece with ball joints, but they did not. This guy is not on ball joints so that is unfortunate, but just something to take note of. Down the sides, he has the same similar attire. Stripes down the sides, stripes down the thighs. You got the Street Profits logo there. None on the other side. He's got these triangle patterns on either side. Just, just plain red and white, you know, jogging pants. I mean, per pretty much he wears joggers to the ring. He's got the, you know, nice tight red joggers. And one thing I am bummed out about, guys, is he does have John Cena feet. Now, this is going to cause a lot of issues, something that I really did not want to see. Just because these ankles, you guys know, if you own a John Cena with these feet, they get super duper loose. They're already kind of loose. Like when you stand him up, he wants to already lean forward. So that is very crappy. You guys will notice right here. Look at the knees. I think these pinless joints are going to cause us to have some damage on the kneecaps because you can see the damage on either side. The top and bottom lower half of the kneecap has that damage on it. Let's go ahead and dive into the guy's articulation real quick. His head moves similar to just about any other Mattel head. We've seen the, you know, the ab crunch before. The waist swivel is tight. It's not loose at all. Arms go up and down like we've seen on multiple WWE elites. Bicep swivel, regular hand articulation. He's not on ball joints, but he still gets a pretty good splitsies in here. 
here. He can kick forward, of course. He does have double jointed knees, and these double jointed knees actually move. He has upper thigh cut. He has ankle rotation and a pivot really nice, but one thing that sucks eggs is he has no articulation on the bottom half of his leg. So it's very similar to the Elite 65 Ronda Rousey, and I absolutely hated that figure. The only way to turn the leg is for the, the upper thigh, and you can bend it and everything like that, but damn, bruh. Cutting it right here would have been super nice. I would have loved to seen a lower calf rotation on this figure. I think that would have made it a lot better for articulation, but he does not come with it, so that is definitely something you want to take note of. But that is pretty much your Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins. You, can, you guys can see Montez Ford just wants to lean forward and smash his face into the turf, but now that we've covered that, guys, let's get into some Street Profits Elite Figure comparisons. And for those comparisons, we have the Jax Deluxe Aggression Street Profits Basic Figures. I'm just kidding, but seriously, the only reason I say that is because look how gigantic Angelo Dawkins was in basic form. Look at this. I know he's 6'5", but this basic is massive. He towers over his own elite, and I know Montez Ford's supposed to be 6'1", but look, his 6'1 basic towers over the 6'5 elite figure, and if you guys want to see a comparison here between the skin tones, they definitely made Montez Ford a little bit darker, which I agree with. I mean, I guess you could head swap it if you want. I like the smiling Montez Ford head sculpt better. It looks more like him and everything like that, but there's your comparison right there. I think these would have been cooler as elites, but nonetheless, you got to go with the red and white. I mean, that's what their iconic look is, but there's your comparison between the basics and the elites. You do get the SmackDown tag titles you can put on those guys, and yeah, that's pretty much it for your Street Profits. But anyways, guys, that pretty much does it for the Street Profits WWE Elite Series 81 2-in-1 review on these guys. Overall, I honestly have mixed feelings about both figures. I think that, I, you know, I love, I first of all, I love the Street Profits. I think they're super entertaining. I think they're really, really good. I hate when WWE makes them do really cringy and awful stuff. I think they're super talented. I think that they could be amazing in singles roles. I think Montez Ford is a future superstar. I think Dawkins can also be a single star, but I, I feel like both guys could be superstars in their own right. I'm really, really high on Montez Ford breaking off and being really big in the singles division. We'll have to see about that in the future, but I think both guys are great as a team. I love them. I've loved them since NXT. They're really fun to watch in the ring, and I love the Street Profits, but there's something about the figures that I'm just not enjoying. I don't know what it is. I think it's mainly the pinless joints, maybe. The lack of articulation on the lower half of Montez Ford, those Cena shoes, you know, no calf rotation, the pinless joints that doesn't allow for like the double jointed knee on Angelo Dawkins, the lack of arm articulation being that he is using a Braun Strowman, but I love the Street Profits. I don't know, I have mixed feelings on both of them, but since these are the first elites, guys, if you miss out on the basics, you definitely want to, they, they, I mean, they're, they're definitely a million times better than the basic Street Profits figures. These are way out of scale. These look better, you get accessories, they look better. I mean, I mean, it, they're elites. They're, they're just way better than the basic figures, right? But overall, I will say I am a little bit disappointed in them. I had way higher hopes for them, and then we are going to probably do some surgery on them, see what we can do about it. And I'm thinking I might even have to completely scrap the joggers attire for Montez Ford and give him some, like, tights look or something so that way, you know, he could he could do some things in the ring, you know? Because I don't want him running around with no lower calf rotation. I think we could play around with that and just see what comes of it, you know? May, nothing may come of it, but it's something to definitely think about. Make, like, a wrestling gear or I know he's in wrestling gear already, but I'm saying like a, a put him in like ricochet wrestling gear or something like that, you know, like Seth Rollins gear or or, or shorts or some uh, some biker shorts or something. I don't know. I'm just playing around with ideas. But if you guys would like to grab the Street Profits, definitely go over to Ringside Collectibles WrestlingFigures.com. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% when shopping over there. I do enjoy the figures. I just think I had them a little bit higher in my head as like the hopes and like the wants for the figures. So I don't think they lived up to the expectation that I had for them, but I am still really happy with them and I can't wait to get some usage out of them and pose them around and things and maybe I'll end up being shocked but at this point they didn't they didn't come in as high as I thought they would and that disappointed me I guess. Let's get into our random comment from yesterday's video. For this comment I want to give a huge shout out to Reese the figure collector for this comment on our last video. He says MDT the arms don't matter. Also MDT raging about Dolph Ziggler arms which is true. This is a true statement. The only reason that I rage about Dolph Ziggler arms is first of all I'm a lot more passionate probably about Ziggler figures so I'm more I'm more anal about how accurate they are and they way over exaggerate his arms man like Jesus Christ has his arms ever been that big he's smaller man he weighs like 200 pounds at the most and they're giving him like these freaking Brock Lesnar sized arms or, or Chris Masters looking ass arms the basic arms look way better on those figures and for Eddie Guerrero I think those biceps work for it and I'd rather him make them look too small than make them look overly overly jacked I think I think I could be wrong about that because you know in Matt Riddle's case they gave him Kalisto arms and we weren't effing with that either. But I don't know. Would I have been okay if they gave him like super jacked cane arms or something? I don't know. So I, I really don't know. 
but that was a true statement. I want to give a huge shout out to Reese the Figure Collector, but I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at my damn toys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you. You crossed the line.